Get ready for high school football action here tonight on WOSN. It is Versailles taking on the host Coldwater Cavaliers and a big Midwest Athletic Conference showdown as we get closer and closer to the end of the high school football regular season. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Mark Shine, I'm Patrick Kamler, and this one is going to be a tremendous matchup. Really looking forward to this one for Sales Coldwater. Uh, it doesn't get much better than this. It does not. In the state Patrick. of Ohio this yep. week. But Versailles, 5-1 and one in the conference play, 7-1 and one overall, a one-point loss to Marion Local. Coldwater's undefeated, 8-0, and 6-0. Oh, and oh. It's a huge matchup. Each team have big MAC games next week, but this game will go a long way towards deciding uh, who wins the MAC championship in 2023. Coldwater trying to stay unbeaten and create another all the marbles matchup between Marion Local as they've had so many times over the last few years. Versailles looking for... Well, trying to get a chink in the armor as far as Coldwater is concerned. It's been a long time since the Tigers have notched a win over the Cavs. That it has. 2004, they played in the state uh, semifinal game, and Versailles won that matchup over Coldwater, and it's been 18 matchups since. They lost in overtime a year ago. They did not play the two seasons before that, uh, but uh, there's been a long time. 18 uh, regular season wins plus playoff wins for the Cavaliers over the Tigers. Last year was an overtime victory for... Coldwater, let's see what they do as we have kickoff. And Versailles getting the football first, and they will start at around the 20 yard line. Versailles with the, both teams are orange and mm -hmm. black, so Versailles with the white jerseys and black pants. Coldwater with the black jerseys and orange pants. We will do our best to keep that straight as the evening goes on. One thing I think we should point out, Patrick, because it's somewhat unusual in today's game, Versailles won the toss and took the ball. And yes. so often coaches want the ball in the second half. They want to make a statement on this possession right here. Michael Osborne leading the Tiger attack. As we get going on first and 10, it's going to be the handoff to Lane Bergman. And Bergman, oh, I'm sorry, that's Garrett. Garrett, yeah. Uh, actually, I will. That was Joel Garrett. Yep, that was Joel took, Garrett. Took the ball off the left side of the formation, picked up 23 in a first down. See the for sales Tigers. They look to the sideline. Coach Ryan Jones to get the play call, and back to it they'll come. It's a right state first down, and that's a great way to start for the Versailles Tigers. As Joel Garrett, we'll tell you about him here a little bit more in just a second. The 5'10", 200-pound senior. Now, this is going to be Osborne on the keeper on first down. Gets around that side across the 50 to the 46-yard line. Good for another right state first down. Once again, they go off the left side of the offensive formation. They cave it in. He gets the edge, and that's really close to a first down. They're going to measure that one? I think so. I thought they, no, they're, nope. they're waving them yeah. over. They can move the chains. Yeah, they did signal it, didn't they? They did. So back-to-back, -back, first down, some big gains. So that's a good start already. 34 yards on this drive. Yep, had to check my math real quick. Good 34 job. yards on the drive. Osborne with a pitch to Garrett. Going off tackle across the 45 to the 43 yard line. Shockingly enough for all the carrying that Garrett does, not the leading carrier on the team, that's still Michael Osborne, but Garrett right there, really a one-two punch for the Tigers. Yeah, absolutely, they got a good block that time. Number 55, Zach Cordagne, one of the right guard, pulled and got out in front of him. Picked up about three. And one thing we'll be aware of there is rain in the forecast more likely in the second half but uh, that's something we're going to have to be concerned with as this game progresses right now a good looking field and a wonderful night for high school football we'll see how long we keep that second down and seven Osborne rolling out looking to pass pressure coming gets away from it out across the 40 to the 39 so Looked like he was going to be in trouble and is able to make a positive play out of it. Michael Osborne's really having a nice year this year. He's rushed for 589 and eight scores. He's completed 57 of his 93 passes, just under 1,000 yards for 10 touchdowns there. He has become a leader on this team and really has performed well for them. And with these early game carries, that puts Osborne up over 600 yards on the season, 57 of 93, 961 yards. Could go over 1,000 yards passing in this game as well. Now third down and three. Here's the handoff to Garrett, and Garrett stuffed at the line of scrimmage as a host of Coldwater 
Cavaliers get in there on the stop. As there was a host of guys that were out there doing it, Brady Layfeld among them with the tackle, and that's gonna bring up fourth down. Well, we talked about they wanted to run left. That time, Coldwater overloaded to that side and got it stopped. And as we saw in the Marion local Versailles game, both teams wanted to go on fourth down a lot, and I think Coach Jones wants to do it again in this particular setting. Not really surprised with this call here. Here we go, fourth and four. Tiger offense trying to stay on the field. Osborne looking to tuck and run. Makes a guy miss. Has the right state first down across the 25 to the 20. Stays in bounds and pushed out of bounds finally at the eight yard line. What a pickup on the ground for Osborne and a right state first down and first and goal coming up for the Tigers. Yeah, he got by Will Berry. And again, that was a design quarterback draw. Made a great move, great cut. Got the ball down to the nine yard line. Got 31 on that play. Outstanding gain there as we take a look at it again on the structure instant replay and Osborne, you know, looked like he was going to get stopped in yep. the backfield and just was able to make that one guy miss and off and running now as it is first and goal at the nine yard line for Versailles. Osborne Dropped ball it. comes out and I think Coldwater's got it. Cavaliers jump on top of it. I think that was Braxton Taylor. but not 100% certain. I am 100% certain that it is cold water football. So trying to get yep. the handoff there and... Kind of hit the, hit the mesh point. It didn't quite mesh. Yeah. Tried to hand the, the football off that time. Inside, it was Blake Henry. And they just didn't mesh and the football pops loose and a black shirt jumps on it. And it's a saving fumble recovery. So that's the first turnover of the game. And now Coldwater Defense stiffens up, forces the turnover, and now the Cavaliers will take the football out. And now they show off their running prowess. Out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. And a nice start for the Cavalier offense. Jack Ebbing with that carry. They kind of have a three-headed monster when it comes to running the football in the backfield. Ebbing is one of those. He picks up the first down to the 31. Another right state first down, first one of the game for the Cavaliers. Nice carry there by the 5'10", 175 pound senior. Gonna swing that out, pass complete. Braylon Harlemert with the completion out across the 40. And they're gonna mark him I think at around the 41, and they're going to move the stick. So another right state first down. So now the Cavaliers showing off their offensive prowess as they're moving the ball down the field. Well, the pass was behind the line of scrimmage. They pulled both guards and tried to get them out of front. But really, Harleman just showed his speed and got to the edge. Between the two Harlemets, Braylon and AJ, they have two wonderful wide receivers. That was Braylon's 30th catch of the season. Gives the Cavaliers a fresh set of downs. And now Balin Blockberger back to pass with time. Pass is complete. Mason Welsh in on the catch at the 47 yard line. Blockberger's really had a, a, a super year for his coach this year. 102 completions in 156 passes. 1,737 yards, 23 touchdowns. We've talked about often, Patrick, this year. I'm not sure who the quarterback, first-string quarterback, is going to be in the, on the MAC team gets announced. There's a lot of good ones this year in this conference. Without a shadow of a doubt. Now here is the handoff. This is Miles Potcotter, his first carry, as he goes into plus territory to the 48-yard line. And that is going to be good for a, another right state first down. Got a good block from Welch as he came from his wing back position to kick out on the end. Take it to the 47, pick up of seven or six if I could add like you could. <laughs> Don't feel too bad. I only have flashes of brilliance when it comes no. to adding things together. I'm a social studies U-boat commander. Mass <laughs> out of my skill level. <laughs> Blockberger with a nice swing pass. Gets that out. Harlemert again now across the 45, and that's where he's brought down for a modest gain. Got out there and played off the block a little quicker that time for just a two-yard pickup. This will be the sixth play of the drive. You know, you look at the Cavaliers offense and you look at the numbers that Blockberger has put up over 1,700 yards mm -hmm. passing. But you don't see in that number is that they've got guys like Depwig, like Miles Potcutter, like Jack Ebbing that can 
get the ball at any point in time and take off with it. Here's Puck Hunter again. Fakes the handoff. Rolling out and is going to tuck and run back to the, now across the 40. And that is where he will be brought down. So second down and short, third down and short, sorry, coming up for Coldwater. Well, and sometimes we don't understand the uh, the ability that Blockburger has to run the football. Sack yardage comes off of rushing totals for quarterbacks in high school football. And so his numbers aren't uh, aren't huge, not that he gets sacked very often, but he can make some, some plays like he did right there. Now we're looking at third down at about three. First third down attempt, I believe, of the drive for Coldwater. So now Versailles with a chance to maybe get off the field. And now the handoff, Ebbing, and not finding anywhere to go as he has stopped at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be fourth down. And is this four down territory for head coach yeah, Chip Otten? That's why I was thinking the same thing. Couldn't get away from Bargy that time. Number 80 came from his defensive end position. Bargy, the leading tackler on this for Sales Tigers team, came into the game 50 tackles, seven sacks, and an interception. So we are looking at fourth down. We are looking at a Cavalier team that's going to go for it. Here comes uh, Zabrida checking in late. Cavaliers in a four wide set. Lockberger just hands it off right up the middle to Ebbing, and Ebbing flowing to the 35 yard line in a right state first down. What a great call that time. You're, you're thinking pass because Blockburger has been so successful. Then you run the draw. Good hard run by Ebbing. It's kind of been the feature back on this drive as he picks up five right there. Another first down. So Ebbing will head to the sideline. Miles Potcutter looking to join Blockburger in the backfield. First and 10, ball on the 35-yard line. 4.41 remaining in the first quarter. And pass is complete to A.J. Harlemert out to the 23-yard line. And that is going to be another right state first down. Got his hands underneath the ball so it didn't get into the grass, and they pick up 11 to the 24-yard line. And they've had the football now for more than four minutes on this drive. Coldwater and Versailles are both teams that have demonstrated that they can Chew clock with their offenses if they need to, but they can strike in a hurry if the situation calls for it as well. Here's a pitch going out to Potcotter, working that left side out across the 20 to the 19 yard line. He got a block that time from Will Berry, got out in front of him, kind of cleared some space for him to go off the left side of the formation and get it to the 19. That's a pickup of five, and we're going to go to the 11th play of the drive. Carson Dews in there on the stop for Versailles. Blockberger, you see, trots over to the sideline, gets the play call from his coach, and then brings it back into the huddle. Cavaliers started this drive on their own nine-yard line. They are now at the Versailles 19-yard line. Here's Blockberger, and it's the handoff. Potcotter to the 19, maybe the 18-yard line and not finding a whole lot of room there. Saw number 29 was the guy who made the first hit. Ross Francis turned it back in, and not much gain, if anything, on that play. I guess the scoreboard gives him a yard. Got a really nice field goal kicker. Should that become necessary for Coldwater on this possession? They're kind of getting his range right now. Said Bryce Cushow has been there. Very good kicker here this season, only a sophomore. Here's Blockberger looking long and just out of the reach of A.J. Harlemert. And that'll bring up another fourth down. That was his first incompletion. He led him just a little bit too much, trying to put it where only his receiver could get the football, but it went out the back of the end zone. So he's looking for that corner and just overshot it a little bit. And I would imagine another fourth down try coming up. Cushow has made one from 37 yards this year. This would be 36 if they attempted. It doesn't so look like this the case, though. Yeah. Fourth and five here. Cody Depwig in the backfield, along with Blockberger. Braylon Harlemer goes in motion. Blockberger pass complete to the 16, to the 15, and 
a flag out over on the other side, and the ball came loose, but officials signal it down. It says an illegal and shift. And, yeah, that's the penalty, illegal shift. And I would imagine since they're going to say short of the first down, I would assume that they're going to decline the penalty, and that would give Versailles the football. Well, it was a 13-play drive. Coach Otten's on the field. He was wanted an explanation of that call. As short as it was, I think he got what he wanted. And well, we're going to have an official gonna measure, timeout. We? No. Yeah. That will determine whether they take the penalty or not. Yeah, absolutely. So they're going to figure out if Coldwater got a first down here. And if Coldwater did get a first down, I would imagine then that Ryan Jones is going yep. to accept the illegal yep. shift penalty and will try a fourth down again. If they didn't get the first down, then it's for sales football. They'll decline the penalty. They've had the football for six minutes and four seconds. They've ran 13 plays against the defense, which is giving up just six points a game and 203 yards per game on the average. That's all they give up at Versailles. And it is? It is short. So the illegal yep. shift is declined, and it will be Versailles football. And that was a case where probably the best case scenario was that Versailles holds them short, and they get the football back. Well, each team has had a drive now. One stopped by a fumble. The other stopped on downs. Versailles comes back out on their own 15-yard line. And you got to think Ryan Jones feels pretty good about that. Fumble, you know, this is kind of where disaster starts for Coldwater opponents, and the Tigers come through with a play. Keep Coldwater off the board. They get the football back. Ball in the 15. Versailles beginning their second drive, and going right along that right side is Garrett. And he picks up six on first down. Right to the 21 yard line. Bring him second down and four, coming up on two minutes remaining. No score so far on the home and insurance scoreboard. It's like Osborne was maybe trying to get him to jump. Get a penalty first down. And now here is Garrett once again, met at the 21 yard line. And will go no further as he gets maybe an additional yard or two on that play. He's gonna make a third down and two. Garrett listed at 5'10", 200 pounds, strong back, not a lot of body size to hit. Looks like they're gonna set it down about the 22 or three yard line. They need to get to the 25 for a first down. So, yeah, additionally or officially a third down and three. Coming up on the final 90 seconds of this first quarter. And here's the handoff to Garrett again. And Met once again at the line of scrimmage. Braylon Harlemert, among others, in there on the stop. He was kind of the last guy to push the pile over. Brady Layfeld also in there on the stop for Coldwater. And it's fourth down. You, you know, uh, Patrick, Coldwater only gives up 71 yards rushing per game. And they were able to adjust to that formation, giving things up off the left side, and that time shut it down. So the Tigers gashed them pretty good on that first drive, and this time not getting much of anything. So they are forced to punt and almost got it. No doubt influencing the punt as it rolls out of bounds at the 41 yard line. So Coldwater's gonna get the football back, 39 seconds left in the first quarter, and they're gonna have fairly decent starting field position, especially compared to their first drive yeah. where they started at their own nine. Leland Bolin has been averaging 38.3 yards per punt, and I think either somebody got a hand on it or they did certainly influence the uh, his, his approach to kick the football because he didn't get much on that one. Start on their own 43. The wind favors Coldwater in this quarter. Been about 10 to 12 miles per hour. First and 10. This is Harlemert. And stopped for a loss of one behind the line of scrimmage. Trying to run that jet sweep from his linebacker position. Lost a yard. For sales has been so good defensively on the season. You're in week number nine. You've given up a total of 48 points on the season. That's pretty good. You're doing all right. Yeah, that's yep. pretty good. Count down the final seconds of this first quarter, as I would imagine this will be the last play if they choose to run it. 
Back to pass is Blockberger. Nice pass catch. is complete. Nice hands there across the 45. Ball comes out at the end, but they're going to say down. And good for a Wright State first down. And that is going to end the first quarter from Cavalier Stadium. No score between the Cavs and the Tigers. Second quarter on the way when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Homans Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Coldwater and Versailles. And tonight's instant replay sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Second quarter about ready to go. Patrick Campbell Mark Shine here with you. Oh, what a wonderful catch by Mason Welch on that last one. Got it out in his hands, had to stretch out and grab it, and then was able to pick up the first down, down to the 44-yard line. Cavs on a move again. So flipping sides of the field, Coldwater with the football. No score here in the first as we head to the second now. And let's say that quick pass, Blockberger getting out to Harlemert. Out across the 40 and push out of bounds at the 36 is going to be just short of the first down. Pickup of nine on that play. Good block that time by Mason Welch as he tied up the DB on that side. Allows that pickup to the 36. So far, the Cavalier, at least the passing attack, has not been going vertical so much as it been kind of running those screen plays, bubble screens, things yep. like that to get guys in space. That play right there is almost like a long handoff. Yeah. Second down and two officially. Here's Blockberger, hands it off to... Kept it himself. He kept it himself. Yeah. Actually thought I was going to go to Depwick <laughs> and keeps it, goes to the 31-yard line, and that is a right State first down. They pulled Barry again. He ran behind him. The ball down to the 31-yard line. Good five-yard pickup. You know, Blockberger's not the biggest guy around, but... Uh, 6'1", 165, but he can move a little bit. Yep. Zay Blockberger has shown some athleticism, and Coldwater fans, of course, have seen it probably all mm -hmm. season long. 6'1", 165-pound junior. Ball at the 31 now, first and 10. Blockberger rolling to his left, looking for someone, and is just going to chuck this one out of bounds. Say so that was in the direction of... Gavin Zabrida. Just his second incompletion. Of course, that was intentionally done. A couple of guys were coming after him. Everybody was covered deep, and they all lived to fight another day. This is four down territory from the 31, so he can do that on that play. Discretion being a part of Valor. So second down and 10 coming up for Coldwater. In the gun, this is the handoff. Depwig this time gets it across the 30 to the 29-yard line where a bunch of Tigers bring him down. Ross Francis among them and on the stop for Versailles. That was just big boy football right there, just man on man trying to create a space for him. They got about three. Third and seven. Tiger defense looking for another stop. Cavaliers looking for another third down conversion. Keeping it. Screen is there. Gets it. Mason Welsh. And Welsh not finding any additional space. A couple of yards on that one down at the 26 yard line, and that's about it. And that'll bring up fourth down and what looks like five to go. James Schmidtmeyer sat on that screen. Did a really nice job of. Holding it to just a two-yard gain. They need to get to the 21 here on fourth down. And it appears that they will go for it on fourth down. Depwig's in. Cody goes 6'2", 220. He will line up in the backfield. Fourth and five. Harlem in motion. Blockberger back to pass. Going vertical through his hands and intercepted by Versailles. A.J. Griesdorn coming up with it. And down at the 34-yard line. 
A.J. Griesdorn, that is his sixth INT of the season, stops the drive. Each team's turned it over once. Pass was thrown a bit high. He's set back there in coverage and made the play. This particular portion of the field, very dangerous. That's where all the turnovers are happening. Said A.J. picked that off, I think, right around the 9 or 10-yard line, I think. We talked about how good they have been defensively. They are giving up, talking about Versailles now, just 97 and a half yards per game through the air. That's his sixth INT of the season, and we're going to get a timeout. Tigers are going to take a timeout and talk this one over. We'll take a timeout as well. 9.47 remaining in the second quarter. It's no score from Coldwater Stadium here at WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. For sales, takes over after the turnover. Osborne looking to throw and is not going to get there. He is brought down for a loss of five at the 30-yard line as number 22 for the Cavaliers, Jack Ebbing who has been running the ball pretty hard for them, now gets the sack and had some help from his friends as well. Welsh was covered deep. He, along with uh, Zabreda, was deep that time, and there's no, no place to throw the football for stack. A defensive struggle here early on. Second down and 14. Osborne with the pitch. That one going out to Lane Bergman. We, we called Welch's name a lot. He made the hit that time. He came flying up to make that tackle. So Welch with another play. As you mentioned, we've been calling his name quite a bit. That play getting three yards back. So a third down and long coming up for Versailles. 6'2", 185 pound junior. Successful on both sides of the ball. Need 11 here. Osborne looking to the sideline, eight and a half remaining in the second quarter. No score on the home and insurance scoreboard. Tigers looking for a first down. Osborne scrambling out of trouble. Let's this one go and almost complete. A.J. Griesdorn looking for it and just couldn't bring it down. And that'll be fourth down and I would imagine a punting situation. It was a bit behind him and a bit high. He reached back for it, made a really nice effort, but the Coldwater Cavaliers are going to hold and force a second Leland Boland punt. So much like the Versailles Marion local game was yeah. low scoring defensive struggle. We are seeing that here between Versailles and Coldwater. This is a yeah. very nice punt and takes a you nice think? Versailles roll. And will they stop it from getting into the end zone? No, they will not. That's 67 yards, Patrick. Yes, there's about a 10 mile an hour wind behind it, but he just cranked that one. A wind or not, that's still an impressive yeah, that's punt. The, the wind didn't push it 67 yards, let's put it that right. way. It was a windy day when I hit my seven iron 200 yards on the golf course, and but it wasn't that windy. <laughs> yeah, okay. The ball wasn't, and it didn't okay. stay straight either, but. Hey, I didn't make that up. I hit it 200 yards. I only needed 140. Did, did you hit it like three or four times or just on one hit? That was on one hit. Oh, okay. Uh, now, right. hey, I got plenty of stories of, you know, going 40 yards on three hits, but that was a good day, Mark. Cavaliers <laughs> third possession. Ball on the 20 for Coldwater. First and 10. Look for that screen. It said he's going middle. He's got a man. Welch. Complete at the 50-yard line. Welch again to the 45, to the... 32 yard line and what a first play out of the gate from this next drive for Coldwater. Well what they did is they faked that pass to the swing side like they've been doing out to the left and that brought the free safety over a bit and he put the ball right on Welch's hands. Big pickup of what 48? Is that right? 30 and 18? 30. I got one right. Yeah you did. Well well done. Oh they moved it back to the 33 yard line so I'm going to show a yard off. In any Still, case, a big, big massive game. But you're right. They showed that screen. Looked like it was going to yep. go to A.J. Harlemert. And Walsh was open, got behind the defense, and picked up a very nice game. Now the ball in the 33. And 
Wattberger is going to keep this one across the 30 to the 29 yard line. So you kind of wondered when Coldwater was going to try and go vertical and extend the field a little bit more, and they used that first play, kind of an ambush, to get the ball going. Set it up by running that uh, wide screens there so often, and then they just set it up and look deep. Mason Welch has had what you call a pretty good first half. To say the least. Second down and seven, tip of the ball on the 30-yard line. Blockberger looking across the nice middle pass. again, finds him complete across the 10-yard line as A.J. Harlemert that time is the recipient and gets the Wright State University first down, second one of the drive for Coldwater, and it's first and goal for the Cavaliers. Got him on a quick slant and just fired it in there. Blockberger passes the football so well. Put that one right on the money into the hands. Of course, he's got good wide receivers, but that was a really nice pass, and now we're first and goal at the nine. Coldwater looking to be the first team to crack the goose egg in the score column. Here's Ebbing working that left side, but the Tiger penetration is there to the nine. So back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. James Schmidtmeyer was in there on the initial stop, but also providing some uh, penetration there as well. I think saw Ross Francis getting after it as well. Made him run deeper into the backfield than he wanted to do. Couldn't cut it up towards the goal line. That allowed the other white shirts to get there. Under six minutes to go. Second down and goal. Ebbing and Depwig in the backfield. And a flag comes out as Blockberger looking for something. Finds a guy in the end zone incomplete. Was looking for Welsh again. The pass was a bit low. He put it only where Welsh could get it. I think this is going to go against the Cavaliers. I think you're right. They're signaling against Coldwater. The initial signal was illegal shift. Question is, do you take it now or do you leave it at third and nine? What do you want to be, second and 14, or do you want to be All third right, and nine? Yeah. I mean, how many opportunities do you want to give them? And so we'll see what they decide to do. Nope. So they'll decline it. Yep. So sometimes you'll sacrifice the yardage, as it were, and take the down. Otherwise, you're going to give them two shots and an extra shot at it from right here. Right. And it's not always advantageous just, to give them more space in the red zone, too. So declining the penalty makes it third and goal from the nine. Blockberger now rolling out. Looks like he wants to go to the end zone. He does, and Harlemert comes down Got it. with it for the touchdown. Let A.J. Harlemert just go up in the air and get it. Rolled out, made a nice pass to him. Cavaliers are on the board. Harlemert's 10th touchdown of the season, and it's 6-0 Coldwater. Bryce Cushow out to attempt the extra point. Made 34 of them this year. Be the first points of this game, and Cushow's extra point is up and good. 532 left in the first half. It's a 7-0 cold water lead here on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's printing sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Our officials for tonight's contest, Scott Army, Arlen Coors, Anthony Adams, Jason Olemacher, and Jeff Bostelman. Six plays, 80 yards, took 236 off the clock. The 47-yard pass to Welch was a big part of that. Then the touchdown pass to A.J. Harlemont. Cavaliers on the board first. Coldwater using a big pass play from Mason Welch or from Baylor Blockberger to Mason Welsh to kickstart the offense, and everything else adds up to six points. 
as the ball rolls out to the 11-yard line before it's fielded by Versailles. That's Osborne, wasn't it? That was Osborne, yes, it was. It's your quarterback runs punch back, runs kicks back, plays defense. Set Such on. a good athlete. Sit here, prepping for the game, and you go, oh, the quarterback, oh, he returns punts and kicks too. Okay. See where they put this one down at. Versailles, I'm not saying we have to have a critical possession, but they're down seven, and Coldwater will get the ball first in the second half. So this beginning on the 28 becomes kind of a key possession anyway. Here's Garrett on first down, and Coldwater sniffs that one out back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. So the Cavaliers on defense have made that adjustment. That first that first drive, they gashed him, but Coldwater has been stiff ever since. Defensive end stand up, stepped up and made the play and turned it back inside. Lose about a yard. That was... Yeah, say maybe they lost a yard or back there. They're well, it's close. Second down and long. Says so it's a 10 on the scoreboard, so we'll go with that. Ball still on the 28. And here's Osborne with a pitch to Garrett. Going to work for that other side. And that Cavalier defense is getting after the ball now. Garrett not finding any space to run on either side at this point. I missed the number of the player who did so, but somebody got in the backfield and made him turn back in before he wanted to. And just no room to run. Might have got a yard, but uh, certainly makes it a very long third down here. At so the Cavaliers. Of course, we're on the Cavaliers sideline. They want to stop here and get the football back before the half comes. Without a doubt, coming up on four minutes remaining. I said, he mentioned about a critical possession. They don't want a three and out here does for sales, and that will keep that from happening. That pass complete across the middle, as that is Jace Watron. You talk about putting some steam on a football. He gunned that one in on the route coming over the middle. And got picked up a huge first down with that 21-yard pickup. That's a Wright State University first down. It puts the ball just shy of midfield, and I was just about to say, the last thing that Versailles wanted on this drive was a three and out. Mm -hmm. And they avoided that. Now can they keep the ball going? Screen pass on first down, and Garrett showing some nice hands. Able to corral that one in and picks up about four on the play. He's not able to get much going from his running back position, so they tried to little swing pass to him. You're right, the ball was led to him just a little bit. He was able to secure it and turn it upfield. Picked up four. Schmidtmar in the backfield now. Garrett didn't come in, into the game with any recognized reception, so that could be his first reception of the season. Second down. Osborne scrambling. Looks and finds Garrett oh. wide open and couldn't bring that one in. Well, first of all, Osborne did a wonderful job of extending the play, and as good as that catch was earlier, Garrett, Garrett was not able to secure that one. And there was a lot of green grass in mm. front of him. I'm really impressed by Michael Osborne. His first year as a full-time quarterback mm -hmm. and his decision-making, his ability to throw the ball where he wants it. He can run with the football as well. We've got two dandy quarterbacks here this evening. Here we are at a big third down, Patrick. Third down and six. Again, big third down. And, and Clay Clock was gonna get him. So they call the timeout to yep. preserve it. And we will step away as well. 3.03 left in the first half. It's 7-0 Coldwater on top. We'll be back. Welcome back to Cavalier Stadium. Coldwater with a 7-0 lead for sales. A critical third down and six. Ball on the 46-yard line. Osborne corrals the high snap. Looking for that left side. Has some space, has some blocking, and gets the Wright State University first down as he goes across the 30-yard line. And another third down conversion for Versailles. Absolutely. They, that play was designed to let him catch the ball in the backfield, have a look at the defense and see where the opportunity is to go. He got a couple guys out in front of him. Turned the Jets on, picked up 15, a very important first down. For sales, has just a single timeout remaining now. 
2.41 to go, and you have to think maybe a, one of the best case scenarios for Versailles is they can score and take out all the clock while they do it. Here's Osborne on first down, rolling out. Pass is complete across the 25 to the 22-yard line before being brought down James Schmidtmeyer, his first catch of the game, and that is a Wright State University first down. And typically, he's the he's blocking short. back in this situation, Patrick. That time they brought him out of the backfield. He made the catch and picked up eight. So that'll be second down and two coming up. We go under two minutes here in the first half. Osborne to Garrett. Can spin move out across the 20 yard line. And that should be good. It will be for a Wright State University first down. Would have, could have, should have been caught in the backfield, but he ducked under the tackle and was able to spin forward to get those three to get the first down. So that'll put the ball at the 20 yard line. And for sales in a mix between clock management and also wanting to take as much time off as they can. Here's Osborne on first down and nothing to doing on that play as Cody Depwig in there for the TFL. He read it just perfectly, saw an opening and turned the Jets on and got himself into the backfield. One yard loss. This will be the 10th play of the drive coming up and we are approaching just a minute. You can see that Braylon Harleman came to the sideline, talked to the defensive coaches to get an assignment. We are under a minute now for sales with one timeout remaining. Osborne back to pass, double hook ball up in the air, incomplete. See who made the break on the ball right there? Harleman he, got in there. Yep. He, got, he got the right instructions from his defensive <laughs> coach, didn't he? Yes, he certainly did. Watchern was the intended target on that play, and the ball was knocked loose and incomplete. So third down and 11 coming up for Versailles. Can the Tigers come up with another big third down conversion? What, one, two, three times already? Three on this drive? Two, this will be the third opportunity. This is third opportunity, yep. okay. Garrett in the backfield with Osborne, third and 11. Osborne buying time, puts that one up, pass is complete. No, incomplete. Couldn't find Lane Bergman going across the middle, just out of his hands, and fourth and 11. And decision time here for Ryan Jones. Bergman made a really nice job. Lane did to dive for the ball, but just couldn't quite get his hands on it. Now we're looking at fourth and 11 with 47.4 to go. Garrett is the kicker for these Tigers. So we'll see if they want to try for three or if they're going to go for it. And it looks like they are going to go for it. Cavalier faithful getting loud. And we're going to have a timeout as Chip Otten wants to talk this one over. Got 47 seconds remaining here. The WOSN Scores app is new and improved. If you have the old WOSN app, delete it. We're not updating it. It doesn't work anymore. It's no good. It's just like that one app that you used to use that promised Patrick, you, you know, riches. It, Download the new one. Well, it's, it's really tough when I hear things like delete the old. Because <laughs> I wonder just how much longer I'm going to be able to stay at the station whenever I hear that, <laughs> that term. You have to hear the whole sentence, Mark. Delete the old app. Nap, yes. The old, every day. You heard nap. You heard nap. Okay, nap. Yeah, every day, good. yes, I got that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Mark. Just read your books. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that doesn't happen because I have too much fun doing this. Mm. What a great football game we got going tonight. Let's see how Versailles responds to this fourth and 11 here, down 7-0. Big fourth down. Tigers trying to keep their drive alive, down 7-0. 47 seconds left in the first half. Four wide, here's Osborne looking to pass. Osborne in trouble. Running out of real estate. Is going to try and run. And no. And they got him. Doing. Got him. At the 35 yard line. They brought four and they dropped seven into coverage. And there's just no place for him to go with the football. 
So a turnover on downs. I believe that's the second one that the Cavalier defense has forced tonight. And Coldwater will get the football back with 37.6 seconds left. And you know, if you're if you're Chip Otten, do you do you oh. take a shot? You know, he's got two timeouts remaining. He's got a really good field goal kicker. He also gets the football first here in half number two. So lots of things to roll around in Chip's brain right now, how he wants to play this 37.6. Said you watch a number of these schools and you think, well, usually this is kind of kneel down territory and we'll go into the half, but looks like the Cavaliers are gonna take a shot at it. Here's Blockberger rolling out. And in trouble is going to be sacked. Schmittmeyer getting in there, and it's going to be flag. Pitched it down. I think so, he might. Go ahead, Mark. I'm looking to see what the call was. I was looking to see if Blockberg was over the line of scrimmage when he made the throw. There was certainly a receiver in the area. I think it's going to be a legal forward pass. I think that's what they signaled. Must be pretty serious. The official lost his hat. Oh, and they'll say downfield. Down that was okay. the call. Oh, well, we, we guessed at a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. Should have just waited for the call. It's always the last one you suspect, which was that one. So the football will go to the, what, 21 say, yard yeah, line? Yeah, between the 20 and the 21 yard line. Yeah. So that'll make it. But more importantly, Patrick, it chewed up about uh, eight or nine seconds. So now we'll see what they do here. It's going to be a straight handoff to Depwig and Depwig. Picks up about eight on the play. And that might just do it here for the first half of action. Cavaliers are heading off the field. Well, I don't know what happened, but the play clock jumped all the way to 10. I, that's really bizarre. Yeah. Well, in any case, yeah. that is going to wrap up the first half of action from Cavalier Stadium. 7-0 Coldwater on top of Versailles. Stay tuned. The second half coming up when we come back here on WOSN. Halftime activities wrapping up here from Cavalier Stadium. 7-0, Coldwater on top of Versailles. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. And tonight's instant replay sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. A wonderful evening for high school football. Certainly hope that keeps up because there is rain in the forecast and now maybe the race is on to get this one in before not that rain cancels football games, but thunder and lightning also tend to be a problem. Patrick Hamler, Mark Shine, your own proverbial thunder and lightning as we call this game here tonight. Cavaliers have uh, not a lot of offense, but I'll tell you what, this has been a really good defensive struggle. It really has. Cold runner broke loose with a 47-yard pass and a touchdown pass. They're up 7-0. I have a feeling this opening possession of second half, very important for both teams. Coldwater up seven, they'll get the ball first. If they go up 14, that puts Versailles in a really serious position. If Versailles can get a stop and get the football back, then we've got a football game still. So the Cavaliers will get the football to start this second half. And we are underway with the second half of football here on WOSN. AJ Harlemert with the return out across the 20 and pushed out of bounds at around the 25 yard line. And that is where the Cavaliers will start this drive. They had a return set up right and he ran a long way to pick up that few yardage that he picked up. They're gonna start right about the 25 yard line. We'll call it to 26. It's so about halfway in between. So as we mentioned. But you know, it's gotta be a rookie crew because they always start on the big hash mark. Normally they start this, they put the ball right down the 25, all the veteran crews do. <laughs> it makes it easier to measure. Right. So here we go, first and 10. This is Harlemert on the sweep. Has some space out across the 50 to the 45 and eventually brought down Michael Osborne in on the stop for Versailles, but a Wright State University first down and just like the drive where Coldwater hit pay dirt, that started with a big play. This one starts with a big play yeah, as well. Caleb Pettigene had a shot at him right about the line of scrimmage, but Harlan leg strength was too strong. He blew by that. Good pickup for them all the way down to the 34 yard line. 
24 and 16 is 40, I think, Patrick. Good pickup on first down. Indeed it is. That'll put the ball at the tip of the ball, the 34-yard line. Great first play from the jump. And now Blockberger hands off. Braylon Harlemert this time getting across to the 31-yard line. Came from his wing back position out of that bunch formation, cut back inside. Picked up about three. They did their damage in the first half through the air, trying to get something done on the ground on this possession. Best thing for Coldwater and the Coldwater faithful will be picking up points on this drive. That would make it that 14-0 lead that Versailles would like to avoid, as you alluded to earlier, Mark. Second down and seven. Hand off. And going across the 30 to 29 is Jack Ebbing. That number 29 in the backfield had a shot at him, Ross Francis. Drug him for a yard or two. I'll put it across the 30 and make it a third down and uh, I'll say about five coming up for the Cavaliers. And we have seen both teams going forward on fourth down in these positions. See if they make it uh, on this down or have an opportunity to go on fourth. Three wide to the right, one wide to the left. Blockburger pass is complete to the 25 yard line. Mason Welsh bringing that in, but it's going to be about a yard short of the first down. They dropped eight into coverage and only rushed three. Gave Blockberger a lot of time and a nice catch by Welch, but they're short by a yard. I would imagine this is fourth down territory. At least I, I, can't, I can't imagine kicking in this situation. Cody Depwig coming in for Coldwater. Not only that, Patrick, but this will be into the wind right now, which is pretty stiff right now, probably 10 to 12, just looking at the flag. So someone on the Versailles side of the field brought a Brought a Tigers flag. Makes it very easy for that us goes to check to the win. every one of their games. Fourth down, and going to have enough for the first down, but a flag comes out at the very end of the play. And Coldwater, as uh, Jack Ebbing carries for the Wright State University first down, and they seem to be indicating that yeah. it is against for sales, and it looks like a face mask. So I believe that's going to be half the distance territory. Or it was only a five-yard variety. Okay, so. No, Patrick, that's not something I'm, I understand. If you grab the face mask, you grab the face mask. It, it ought to just be a consistent, you, you know. It, I, I, know. I tend to agree with you. Well, it wasn't that severe because your head is still attached to your body. I, I, now, that wasn't that br brutal. But, you know, you're, you're making, right, asking right. an official to make a, a judgment on harshness. And uh, I don't know. I just like to see it be, just be a penalty. Well, you talked about some time ago about officiating and how do you judge intent. And that's, that, that's kind of the territory that goes into. Mm. In any case, it is a first down. And Blockberger going to keep this one. Look at that right side and hit by his quarterback companion <laughs> on the other side, Michael Osborne. A gain of uh, two, I think, on that play. We leaped over the first guy and then couldn't get past the tackle by Osborne. Osborne came in there like a rocket. Upended Blockberger. Blockberger's run the football several times this evening. This time from the 16 yard line. They're going to take a timeout. So, timeout called on the field. Coldwater will take it. That's their first. We'll take it as well. 8.35 remaining in the third quarter. It's 7 0 Cavaliers, but they're looking for more here on WOSN. Welcome back. 8.35 remaining in the third quarter. Cavaliers with the football and a seven point lead. Second down and eight coming up. Ball on the Versailles 16 yard line. Blockberger, play action, back to pass, has time, and the ball's going to be in the dirt, incomplete. Intended receiver, well, at least the guy that was closest there, looked like it was number 44 for Coldwater. That would be Keaton Tobin. Although I don't know if that's right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say that was Mason Welsh. I think it was. The yeah. one was a four. Yes in my brain, but it was actually a one. So well, they only nice rushed match. four that time and they dropped seven into coverage. Didn't get a lot of pressure on, but there wasn't any place to put the football either. Third down.
Cavaliers trying to extend their lead. Versailles looking for another stop. As the defenses for both these schools have been stout so far. Blockberger over the middle, has Harlemert for the touchdown. What a great pattern that time and the ball perfectly thrown. Braylon Harlemert hit across the middle by Balin Blockberger and it's a 13-0 Cavalier lead. Not sure the Cavaliers could have done it any better. Just exactly what they wanted to do. Took, what, three and a half minutes off the clock. 74 yards. Yep. And established the fact they're going to be up two scores. Cushow on to attempt the extra point. And it is up and it is good. 8.26 remaining in the third quarter. It's a 14-0 cold water lead here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Cavaliers going 74 yards in about three and a half minutes, taking a 14-0 lead on Versailles. And it is, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get overly dramatic here, Versailles getting the football and we're turning it to the 36 yard line, but you get the sense that Versailles hasn't been able to do much offensively since that first drive. They need to get something positive here that they can hang their hat on on this drive. I think that's very accurate. When you're down two scores to a team as good and as offensive minded as Coldwater has been, you haven't been able to put any numbers on the board yourself. This is a huge possession, I think, for the Versailles Tigers. Osborne with Garrett. Off to his side, first and 10, ball on the 36 yard line. Osborne play action in trouble, is looking long, has a man pass incomplete. Lane Bergman, the intended receiver for Versailles, and Coldwater's defense all over it. Mason Welsh, uh, among others, in on the stop there. Michael Osborne, that ball came out of his hand funny, almost like it slipped. It didn't have the same rotation, same movement like we're used to seeing. And he missed his target rather badly. I just think that ball came out of his hand oddly and on that first down pass. So it looks like it was about maybe five yards short of Bergman and probably fortunate that it went out of bounds because it's possible Coldwater mm -hmm. could have come down with it. Now second down and 10, Osborne back to pass again. This time is a completion across the 35, 45 rather to the 40 seven yard line. And that was a lot more in his throwing motion that time. Snapped it out there in a hurry with some velocity on it. Good catch. A.J. Griesdorn bringing that one in for Versailles. Griesdorn had 19 catches for 252 yards and a couple of scores before tonight. That was a Wright State University first down for the Tigers as they keep the ball moving. And now Osborne, the keeper, looking at that right side, now cuts up the middle across midfield to the 44-yard line before he is tripped up. You can see how patient he was. He, he stuck his foot in the ground when he saw that opening and turned on the Jets. But he had to wait for just a moment for a blocker to clear him some space and did so very well. If that was Mason Welsh in there on the, the trip and Take a shot the on tackle. the second one. I would. Osborne rolling back around and does take a Got shot. Him. Has a man caught and down at the one yard line as Lane Bergman. They connect that time for a Wright State University first down and it's first and goal for Versailles. Well, he might have snapped that first one off in this drive a little bit awkwardly, but his last two have been dynamite and nice catch as well. All the way down to the one yard line. So they take a shot and it pays off. First and goal for Versailles. And they're a yard away from getting themselves back in, into this. I think Garrett gets the ball. Guess who? Garrett pushing the pile and gets in for six. Huge drive for the Versailles Tigers. Cuts the Coldwater lead to 14 to six with the extra point coming.
And Garrett, who does the kicking duties for the Tigers, will come on to attempt the extra point and make this a seven-point game. And somebody jumped. And, yep, flags all over the place. Now that becomes a, do you take the, the shot at one or do you want to go for two here? See what coach chooses to do. Of course, the PAT situation. And they're going to go for two. among yep. Versailles, and they are indeed going to go for two. Make it, you're within six. Miss it, your next touchdown, you're going to have to go for two. Right. It's amazing what that extra yard will do. Play clock's running at 15. So they're going to need to get a play in here or Osborne under center eye formation and Osborne is going to keep it himself and takes it in for the two point conversion so the offsides call leads to a call to go for two and that's what Versailles gets 648 remaining in the third quarter it's a 14 to 8 Coldwater lead here on WOSN Welcome back. Tonight's Instant Replay sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And our first down sponsor tonight, Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. 64 yards, five plays, a minute 38 off the clock for sales back in it. Two-point conversion, good. Following the cold water penalty as nice this one kick. will roll all the way back out of the end zone. You can see A.J. Harleman hoping it was kick out of bounds. Instead, it stayed inbounds and got into the end zone. Difference of 15 yards on that. So that'll put Coldwater back on offense. And for sales, you know, we, we talked about they needed something positive mm -hmm. to happen in the third quarter, get some offensive identity established, and I think they did that in this last drive. Sometimes you look at teams, are they resilient? You know, th this game was on verge of, of getting away from a little bit. They were down 14-0, yep. had scored, and they came right down and put a big number up, including a two-point PAT. And now the Cavaliers with the football trying to answer, and the carry there across the middle. That's Cody Depwig with the carry. He picks up a couple of yards as the Rain begins falling here at Cavalier Stadium. It was a serious collision about the 24-yard line. You heard that one up here in, our, yeah. in the press box. We both got our headsets on. Yeah. It's like, do we have microphones on the offensive line? No. You could hear that one from all the way up here. Five-yard gain. Now Blockberger back to pass and a little miscommunication there. Was behind his intended target. Trying to get it to Zabrita. Kind of like a back shoulder, but Zabrita went yep. farther upfield than he anticipated and looking at third and six. I don't think we're to the point yet where the ball would be wet enough that it would affect that particular throw. Not, not just quite yet. Just communicated, I think. Not quite yet. But if this keeps up and it looks like it will, judging by the radar, it could. Here's Bachberger the pass, and that time looking for Zabrita again. And Miscommunication, incomplete, yeah. and it's going to be punting time for Coldwater. So Versailles building some momentum here, a touchdown drive, and now a three and out on defense. They are. They, that time they, they brought people after Brockberger in the backfield and threw the ball with some steam on it, just wasn't able to secure it. And this will be their first punt tonight. Cavaliers get the punt away and will take a little bit of a cold water bounce and be downed at the Versailles 44 yard line. So the Tigers will have pretty decent field position as they set up shop for their next drive. 601 remaining here in the third quarter. The three and out took just 47 seconds off the clock. So we're still at halfway through the quarter and really good field position for Versailles. And they got some mo on their side right now. They got the wind at their back. 
to score, uh, perhaps with that wind in the back and the rain behind him as well. Ball at the 44-yard line. And this is going to be Osborne keeping it himself and, and it picks up about a yard. That's it. Actually, well, barely a yard. Wanted to run the ball up the middle that time, but too much cold water defender. That may be a foot. They'll give him a yard. Second down and nine. Be interesting to see how the rain will affect the passing game for both these teams. Osborne's going to uncork it. That one a little high, incomplete. Was looking for a watcher in there across the middle and couldn't hit him. Watcher in 15 catches, 337 yards, and four touchdowns coming into tonight's game. Targeted that time, but the ball was well overthrown. So now third and nine. Tigers trying for another third down conversion. Third down and long conversion. They've had a few of those tonight. Osborne back to pass, has time, looking down the sideline and has his man at the 21 yard line. Good for a Wright State University first down. As coming up with that one is Jace Watrin. Good throw, good sliding catch. Down to the 23 yard line, 32 yard pickup. And another third down conversion for the Tigers. They've done that several times this evening, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Go get my play sheet out and go back and look through that, but they've done a nice job with that this evening. See, there's a matchup down that left sideline that they have liked and they've exploited here on the last couple of drives. Osborne keeps it, flag comes out on the play as Osborne lowers the shoulder and takes the hit down to the 19 yard line. That's where you usually see a hold call. Let's see what this one ends up being. Yep. And you're absolutely right. So never mind. we'll go back 10 yards and do it again. Of course, this is a penalty now that's marked off from the line of scrimmage this year. So it'll be first and 20 not from spot foul like he used to be. Which ends up being about, what, a two yard difference? In well, this just, particular it case? just depends. You get that hole deep in the backfield on a pass play when you're six or seven yards behind the line of scrimmage and you tack 10 on top of that, it really becomes difficult, but now it just moves it back to the 33. But 10, 10 yards is enough penalty, I think is how it's right. viewed now, rather right. than making a spot foul too comes a signal to put the play clock back into function. Great crowd on hand, both sides representing their teams very well. Here the Versailles student section from all the way up here, here on the Coldwater side of things. And now on first and 20, here's a carry by Garrett, getting some nice space out across the 25 yard line. So picking up some of those yards back on first down. Got about seven on that carry to the 26. Still looking at, you know, looking at second and 13, but that's a lot better than they were a moment ago. And he saw some of that space on the line again that Garrett was able to exploit on their first drive. And you have to think that the the deep attack that the Tigers have been able to do may have opened that up on the line here just a little bit. Now second down and 13. Osborne pitches to Garrett. Looking for that far side, and Coldwater says, nope. They brought You're the, not exploiting nothing. Yeah, brought the free safety up from the middle, and he got, in, got it all jammed up that time. I thought perhaps Garrett had a chance to pop it and get by him, but he was able to adjust and, and make the play that time for a no gain. Harlem Mert, Potcotter in there on the stop, and that's going to bring up third and 13. It's another one of those third down plays, Patrick. So you have to wonder if maybe they'll look on that side again. Jace Watchern is lined up on that far side. Lane Bergman next to him as well. Those have been his targets on these plays. It looks similar. He's going to go to Watchern and Watchern with the completion out to the 25 yard line, but is going to be about two yards short, or a yard short maybe, of a first down. Ran a little square out pattern. He looked at him the entire way, and this is going to set up a crucial fourth down. Said Watcher and ran a curl route instead of a streak on that play. Made the catch, and that's going to make it fourth and two. 
and get to about the, the uh, what, 13 yard line, I think. I believe you're right. It looks like the 13. Coldwater needs a stop. Osborne has plenty of space. First down and then some. He's going to take it all the way to the house for a touchdown. A Wright State University first down and six more points. And they have tied this one up at 14. How about that play? He got a good block from his interior line, then a seal block from one of his backs. And he just turned the Jets on and motored into the end zone. Untouched to the house. And now Versailles with a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. Somebody and came, right, and came wow. right through and blocks the extra point. Jack Ebbing right up the middle. Getting right in there in the Tiger business, and we are still tied. 3-11 left in the third quarter. It's 14-all here on WOSN. Welcome back. Versailles with a touchdown, and then Coldwater blocks the extra point. So we are all tied up at 14. Leland Bolden, its last kickoff was really good. This one's headed to the same spot. That one's going to go out of yeah, bounds. Yeah, didn't quite get to the same spot, did he? Nope. Not quite. Well, you know what? It's time to see what Coldwater's got in the tank. We've seen Versailles go down 14-0, put two touchdowns on the board, sandwiched around a three and out by Coldwater. See if the Cavaliers can answer. Cavaliers have, this will be the third time that they have allowed double digit points this season. Coldwater came in giving up 11 and a half points per game, Versailles six. Take that back the fourth time that they have given up double digits points. Before that, it was either six or seven points. And here's a great start to the drive. How about going right up the middle? Across the 50 to the 45 is Jack Ebbing for a Wright State University first down. And a flag comes out at the very end of the play. It looks like it's going to be a, a sideline warning against Versailles. One of the guards pulled up in front and then got a good block from Welch in the at the secondary level, a nice run. What are we going to put it down at? I think they're going to say they're going to mark it to the 47 yard line. Okay. Good run on first down. Big play to start the drive for Coldwater. Under three minutes remaining in the third. And another handoff, and this time for Sales is there, stopping Ebbing in the backfield. As that was number 26 for Versailles getting back there. Blake Henry causing the disruption and getting the TFL. Lou Kaiser was in the backfield too. A couple of guys penetrated. They tried to kind of the same type of motion, pull the guard and also Welsh from his wing back position. But not that time. Tigers were on top of it. Loss of one, second down and 11. That been coming in a little late. Pass is tipped in the air. Almost, I don't know if it was almost intercepted by Henry, but he definitely got his hand on it. And he did. Blake got up in the air, and there was a little bit uh, twisting his body around, so it was difficult to make the catch, but he did spoil the play. Now we're looking at third and 11. A long third down, and now Coldwater with the opportunity to try and convert a long third down. If for sales holds, Coldwater will have to punt into the wind. Ball on the 48. Blockberger. Back to pass. Has time. Going long. Has his man in and out of his hands. Incomplete. A.J. Harlemert, the intended receiver. And he was right there. Couldn't bring it in. It's fourth down. Just a shade long. Uh, that's inches away from being a big play and perhaps even a touchdown. They rushed three, dropped eight into coverage, and he still came out open. 
There's going to be a punt. Second punt in the last two possessions. As soon as that ball was thrown, I thought it was too long, and Harlemer did a Just, great yes. job getting that close to it. So here's the punt. And I would say the wind probably impacted it a little bit. It's going to take a yes. Versailles roll, about eight yards. It's down at the well, rolls out of bounds, I should say, at the 34-yard line. Now, that 7-iron you talked about a little while ago, does your 7-iron check up like that one and roll back towards the hole? And is that no, that's I, your? Not really. No. I haven't I haven't mastered that, that part of it yet. If I'm lucky, I can get my 8-iron to just sit where uh -huh. it drops. Um, I haven't really gotten the backspin thing down yet. Well, here is a hot Versailles offense back on the field. Touchdowns their last two possessions. Tigers back on, 153 remaining, all tied at 14 on the home and insurance scoreboard. Full house tee. Osborne hands off to Garrett. We've seen that, uh, that in was, goal uh, line situations, yeah. but uh, yeah, first time we've seen it up uh, out in the middle of the field like that. Picked up four. Okay, this is a four-yard gain, so. Is this for sale saying we're going to see who's manning up here? Let's just come Maybe. out. We're going to see if you can stop us. We're going to. One of those, was it 15, 16 play drives they had, that they had yeah, against Marion Local a couple two weeks of those. ago? Yeah, one was 15, one was 16. Full house backfield again. Helmet on a helmet. Let's see what happens. Second down and six. Showing blitz. Here's Garrett again. And through to the 40. Picks up about a two, and Goldwater defense saying, all right, you bring lunchbox and a flashlight. It's offensive lineman, 55, Zach Cordonier, 57, Dominic Bargy, 51, Andrew Kieser, 66, Daniel Waymeyer, 75, Dominic Meyer, the tight end, 81, Luke Kaiser. And they're just lining up trying to knock people off, and they're going to go unbalanced this time. Third and four. Osborne three yards back and is going to keep it, working that right side and slips down to the 39-yard line. So the rain coming down looks like it's starting to affect the elements. Of the elements starting to affect the field a little bit. Depwick was there and he tried to make a cut. His feet went out from yep. underneath him. Quick punt, trying to get it before the Cavaliers are set. And they do get the punt off, taking advantage of it. Also the wind. Yes in their favor for this one, fielded at the 20-yard line and putting out of bounds, A.J. Harlemert is at the 25. So a good call to punt while the wind was in your favor. Really good piece of coaching to get that punt off when you still yeah. had the wind behind you. You have to receive the punt with the rain blowing into your face, which was done well. And we'll put the football down the 25-yard line. We'll have 2.4 seconds left here. Coldwater will get one more play, barring a defensive penalty here in the third quarter. Phelan Blockberger coming back out. All tied up at 14 on the home and insurance scoreboard. What a contest we have had here for you tonight on WOSN. And there's still 12 minutes of football remaining. Swing pass incomplete. Is that a lateral? And dives onto it. They acted like it was. Uh, officials are going to say incomplete, and that is it for the third quarter. 12 more minutes of football. We're all tied at 14 between Versailles and Coldwater here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve your bank your way. Fourth quarter action, ready to get started here from Coldwater Stadium. Cavaliers and the Versailles Tigers all tied up at 14. Patrick Kamler, Mark Schein here with you. Coldwater had a 14-0 lead, but the, uh, the, the Tigers have stormed back, tying this one up at 14, and we are ready for an exciting 12 minutes of football here to come. Now the linesman from the far side wants to get his crew together. I'm not sure what, uh, what he wants to accomplish here. Is the ball not in the right place? Well, it so, was, yeah, it is. Okay. He's put on the 25. It's an incomplete pass. It probably went back to the 25. That, that's <laughs> so. Anyway. I mean, that sounds well, solid, sounds that Mark. Way. That's solid logic. 
you never know. Ball in the 25, second down. Blockberger. Good pressure. Scrambling and throws this one away and avoiding taking a loss of five on the plate. He was really close to being out of bounds when the pressure got to him. He was able to unload it. So I'll make a third down and 10. Versailles has been a, done a better job here in half number two of putting pressure on Blockberger. They haven't gotten to him so much, just gotten into his, yep. uh, make him roll out or make him run a little bit and not be so comfortable in the pocket. Right, as I was going to say, comfortable. He doesn't look as comfortable in yeah. the pocket as he was in the first half. Now they've also had times when they've rushed just three and dropped eight into coverage. Let's see what happens here. Third and long for the Cavaliers. Blockberger looking long, in trouble. Kaiser chasing him down. And they got him at the 23-yard line. That's what they did that time. They brought three. They dropped eight into coverage. He had nowhere to go. Finally, those three flushed him out of the pocket, brought up the quarterback from that side to help make the tackle, but sack, and now Coldwater will have to punt, this time with the wind. They punted now the last three possessions. Yeah, Kaiser with his third sack, and now, as you said, third straight possession that Coldwater has had to punt it away. So for sales has definitely stiffened up here in the last few possessions against the Cavalier offense and the punt gets off and it takes a nice cold water bounce that's going to roll all the way down to the 15 yard line so talk about flipping the field that's yep. exactly what Coldwater needed to do and well, they did. Lane Bergman and Michael Osborne were both deep the ball was kicked between them they each kind of looked at each other like who's going to play it and, and neither one of them did and they got a good roll out of it all the way back to the 15. So a nice, nice punt. Yes, it was. <laughs> Jinx, you thinking the same thing. <laughs> okay, so you put 27 and 35 together. That would be, come on, Jacob. Oh, you're 62. 62. Come on, Jacob. We've got Jacob O'Neill, our camera guy beside us, camera guy extraordinaire. He does, that's French. It means you're pretty good. <laughs> Zach Keith doing our sideline cams. Yeah. You could yell that question down to him, but oh, that would just freak out a lot of people. Yeah, but he would know. Garrett with the, Got him in the back ball field. and absolutely bringing that one down behind him. And that's going to be a loss of three on that play as it was a flood of Cavaliers getting the stop there. I would love to get the uh, the Cavalier play sheet for the year now. We're in game number nine. I wonder if they punted three consecutive possessions at any point in the year. I'm, I'm going to bet the answer to that is no because they have been so efficient offensively. Right. I would say if it has happened, I'll bet it's happened maybe one other time. If that. Defense stiffening up here, second down and 13. Osborne scrambling, low and right, directing traffic, evades a tackler and throws this one and is high. And is it intercepted? No. Yep, Incomplete. Uh, yeah. He did a great job. He eluded the rush, got wide, had to elude the rush again, then overthrew a target and almost had it picked off. After I thought that play was going to be a loss and yeah, then turned it, it into right. just an incomplete just, pass. Correct. But with the, the run and now the incompleted pass, they've had the football, we know, for just uh, under 50 seconds. They need 10 right here. Have to punt it away. And into the win gave good field position to the Cavaliers if they can't get a few first down here. Third down and 13. Ball on the 12. Trips left. Osborne. Bubble screen. Yep, bubble screen complete. Grease Dorn with it and not going any further than the 18-yard line. And, and that'll bring the punting unit out for Versailles. Yeah, here comes Leland Bolin. Averages 38.3 yards per punt, but this will be in a kind of a slick conditions and into the wind and from, uh, you know, just from his own 17-yard line. So Coldwater's going to get really good field position here if they can field this punt in the air. Might see Coldwater come after this one only one guy back they do and almost Whoa. got it that they might have even gotten a hand on it fair catch called to the 49 yard line so Coldwater gets after it AJ Harlemer calling for the fair catch and the Cavaliers are going to start in plus territory for the next drive yeah, and you mentioned flip the field that time with the really good punt on the the previous possession by Coldwater and then they held up defensively well 
forced a three and out, and they're going to get the ball on plus a side of the field, as you said. Haven't had much going here in the first, in the second half. If if Jim Trestle were watching this game, he would be smiling at the Coldwater the team right now. That's the most important play of the game. That's right. Yeah. Got some field position out of it. Oh, Got reverse him. pass. Yep, yep, Hollimer yep, 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 going yep. long, looking for AJ. And did he get him? No. No. Incomplete. You know why? Because number 17, Michael Osborne, made a tremendous recovery when the ball was in the air. The DB was beaten on this side on the reverse pass, and Osborne got over and helped break that one up. I thought for a minute that Harlemont was hurt when he had the collision down there. He's not going to play on this particular play anyway. Thanks to Structure for showing us the instant replay of that one. And, yeah, he's going to sit out. He's a little shaken up on that play, but little chicanery back of the playbook action there from Chip Otten. Second down and 10. And this will be the handoff to Depwig up the middle. And that's good for a Wright State University first down. Good job creating a hole up front by those people that you see on their offensive line. Kale Wenning, Tyler Jones, Troy Milligan, Will Berry, Andrew Jones. And then the hard run that time by Depwick. So that puts the ball at the 37-yard line, first and 10. 9.03 remaining in the fourth quarter. This is handoff to Ebbing. Ebbing working up the middle down to the 30-yard line. Pickup of eight. Yeah, they found something now, haven't they? Back-to-back -back runs up the middle. So after the double reverse pass, they've gone up the middle the last couple of plays and have found some success now. Second down and three coming up for the Cavaliers. See if they want to take a shot deep right here. As you say, second and three. Plenty of opportunities in the past, missed uh, fires. Parliament's back in the game too. Just one play out for him. Yep. Harlem Mertz out wide. And it's gonna be a handoff. This is Potcotter. And he is at to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Tried to run to the short side of the field that time. Just wasn't any space for him to make up any ground with that way the Tiger defense reacted to it. Now we go to third and three. So third down and short opportunity here for the Cavaliers to see if they can keep their offense on the field. I think we said Cusho's longest field goal of the year is 37 yards, I believe you it said is. earlier. Yep. And on a slick field, although with the wind behind him tonight, probably need at least to, to be that close. Blockberger rolling, firing, pass complete to Harlemert at the 25-yard line. And it looks like that is going to be enough. Yeah, for to, a Rice State University first down. Had to get to the 27 at least. They got to the 25 on that five-yard pickup and extend the drive. Cavaliers keep the offense going now. 7.20 remaining in the game. Quarterbacks who can roll left and still throw the ball accurately right-handed. A little bit of special talent. That's for sure. I mean, it's hard enough rolling to the right and throwing right let alone rolling to your left and throwing right. Here's the pitch to Ebbing on first down. Has some space out across the 15. Still fighting off, guys, to the five-yard line down to the, they'll mark him down at the five-yard line. A right state first down, and it's first and goal for the Cavaliers. Hit that right tackle spot in a hurry, and he was on the move. They were able to drag him down, but not after he picked up an extra five after contact. Here's Coldwater with a chance to take a, a lead. First and goal coming up for Coldwater. As you said, Mark, a chance to retake the lead. So you got Depwig and or Ebbing and Potcotter there. And what do we and have? Harlemert coming in there late, and mm -hmm. Chipotle's going to call a timeout to avoid any kind of penalty. We'll take a timeout as well. 6.29 remaining in the game. 14 all here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and for sales. First and goal for the Cavaliers, all tied up at 14. Coldwater looking to retake the lead. 
after being up previously 14-0 for sales, coming all the way back to tie it. Now Coldwater looking to go up once again. Blockburger hands off to Ebbing, Ebbing up the middle, a couple, and that's it. Not sure that's all bad for Coldwater. Just take a little bit more extra time off. Obviously, they want to get uh, six or seven points out of this. But to take an extra play or two, not sure that's all bad for them. Versailles still has all three of their timeouts. They do. And the Cavs have burned two of theirs. Yep. So, but you're right, though. I think Coldwater, if they can burn a minute, maybe an additional couple minutes off this and get the points, that would uh, go a long way towards potential victory at home here tonight. Of course, the key to that is getting in the end zone. Blockberger rolling like right out. He's going to take it in himself and takes two guys in and has got the touchdown. Took two for sales defenders on and says, no, no one lets me not get into my house. 20 to 14, Coldwater. Blockberger's third rushing touchdown of the season. He gets into the end zone. Now that all-important PAT right here. Couchel will come on to attempt the extra point with the wind at his back, but rain on the ground. Versailles had an extra point go awry on this side of the field on their last attempt. Couchel's kick is up, and it is good. Cavaliers retake the lead, 21 to 14 over Versailles. 5:46 remaining in the game. We'll be back after this on WOSN. Welcome back, 546 remaining. Cavaliers retake the lead, 21 to 14. Cavaliers had a 14-0 lead. Versailles closing that gap to nothing. They tied it up at 14, and the Cavaliers scoring here with just under six minutes remaining in the game as the rain getting heavier here at Cavalier Stadium. Cavaliers did just exactly what they wanted to do. Good punt on their possession, forced a punt, got the ball on the plus side of the field, took it down, eight plays, 49 yards, 345 off the clock. Let's see if Versailles has an answer to them yet. Tigers fielding it at the three yard line and a nice return out to the 40 yard Ball's line. See, the ball comes out, nope. no, they're saying it's down. Oh boy. And disaster averted there for Versailles. And ball control is going to become a key factor of the next drive for Versailles, really for any team that has the ball from here on out. Just, it is going to get slippery out there. Just a few weeks ago, I saw Versailles or in this particular position against Marion Local, and they drove it down the field and scored late. Let's see if they can do it again. Tigers with the football. Ball on the 38-yard line, first and 10. Osborne hands it off to Garrett going up the middle and pushes the pile out to the 45-yard line. They have all of their timeouts left. That's a good six-yard pickup on first down. Say, if you're a Versailles fan at this point, you really have no, time, no problem with using the remaining 5-12 of this clock, put it in the end zone, and then they say go for two on the road, and... That might be what happens here, but they got to get there first. Osborne in the gun, second down and four. Osborne keeps it, going that left side, has plenty of space, picks up a nice block. He's across the 30 to the 26-yard line, slid to the 22 to just give you an idea of the field conditions out there. Good for a right state first down. I think A.J. Harlem had cut the wheels out from underneath him that time, but when he hit that seam on the edge, he just turned the jets on, got it all the way down to the 27-yard line. Tell you, that was a great read by Osborne because Garrett was buried behind the line of scrimmage and Osborne kept it and picked up a really nice game, put him in plus territory. Spot the ball to 27. First and 10, four and a half remaining in the game. Ball's ball loose. comes out, Garrett tries to get it. Coldwater says they have it. Cavalier ball. Wow, second huge turnover. They turned the football over on their very first possession of the football game with a fumble as they were going in on the nine yard line and that turns, turns to be another one. Coldwater possession. 
Structure replay on it, and very similar to what happened on that first drive you were talking about, Mark. Just lost the yep. handle of the football, and the ball's just getting harder and harder to handle out here. And the Cavaliers get the football back with four and a half remaining. And if Versailles wants to have a chance in this one, they have got to get Coldwater's offense off the field. They do have all of their timeouts remaining, does Versailles Tigers. At 428, they don't need to start burning them yet. But they need to get a stop. Ball snapped, handoff to Ebbing. Ebbing back to the line of scrimmage, maybe one yard. Serious collision that time with Zach Cordania at the bottom of the pile. You can see he was really trying to protect the football as he went in there to pick up that single yard. Oh, hum, Patrick, just another Friday night in the MAC. That's right. <laughs> it seems like it's this way in every game that we, we cover for these guys. And look, it's Coldwater and Versailles in uh, another big week nine matchup. Look at Blockburger letting the clock run down. Chewing that play clock up, it's at seven. Say so they're gonna use every bit of it that they can. Counter. Hand off, Harlemert to the 26, 27. Uh, really no gain on that. And Versailles will go ahead and use a timeout. That's their first one of the half. And that'll stop the clock with 341 remaining. So we'll take a timeout as well. 341 left, 2114 Coldwater. We'll be back. Three forty-one remaining here in Coldwater. Cavaliers with a twenty-one to fourteen lead and trying to hang on to the football for the final three forty-one. Big third down and eight coming up for the Cavalier offense. Blockburger going to go back to pass and the pass is incomplete, so that will stop the clock and bring up fourth down for Coldwater and Cavaliers out to punt. I would imagine. And they're going to have the wind at their back, which will help him out in this position. He wanted Harlem to run just enough past the sticks so that he could throw it to his back shoulder and make the catch. Harlem ran a little farther than he thought he was going to go. And then he slipped on the grass trying to get back to the football. So that's going to be an incomplete. Here comes the punt. Last one was a really good one. Are they coming? They might be. Yes, sir. Here they come. And the punt. Looks like it went off the side of his foot. That's going to roll out of bounds at the 49-yard line. So Versailles is going to have pretty good field position with 331, two timeouts, and only about half the field to cover. Well, and right there, the Versailles Tigers defense stood up and made the stop yep. they needed to make. Been a proud defensive unit all year long. I think the ball's going to go right to midfield, isn't it? I think. Think you're trying, to keep right. it, trying to keep it from the rain from keeping it wet, so the official's holding it right now. Yeah, the nose of the football on midfield. Tigers back with the football, 331 remaining. That last turnover didn't cost them. And Osborne is just going to tuck and run. Left side, 40, 39. Pushed out of bounds, should be good for a right State first down. He ran away from the blitz. Blitz came up the middle that time. I think Coldwater thought it was going to be a run play by Garrett up the middle, and he outran the blitz and picked up 11. And that also will stop the clock. After just seven seconds. So if you're for sales, obviously getting the points is, is paramount. Yep. If you could chew as much time off the clock as you can, very much it's kind of the same scenario that they had in the last drive. But as they also learned, getting those points is more important than chewing the clock. Garrett tripped up at the line and able to pick up about one yard, and that's all. Is that Braylon Quinn got in the backfield? No, it was I, Andrew Jones got in the backfield, 68. Okay. That'll be a no gain, make it second and 10. Yep. 2.53 and counting. Osborne in the gun. Back to pass, in trouble, slips in deep trouble, and he is going to go down. 
Well, that was a designed quarterback draw, but he couldn't get any leverage with his feet. She said he slipped out from underneath him. He's going to lose a couple back to the 41. So a loss of a couple on that play will make it third down and 12. Clock continuing to run. Clock not a factor yet. And Versailles is not going to burn their timeouts until they absolutely have to. Trips to the right, single receiver to the bottom of your screen is Jay Jace Watron. Watron's had a long catch and a little miscommunication there, I think, looking for Watron and threw it behind him, and it's going to be fourth down. You can see the Coldwater players encouraging their fans. The fans are over here. We're on their side of the field. They're up understanding how important this defensive play is right here with 2.01 to go and fourth and about a 12. And it looks like that they are going to go for it on fourth down. I said there is a school of thought that you could punt it and try to pin cold water deep, counter your defense to make another stop. But the Tigers are going to go for it. Fourth and 12. Not the ball game, but pretty close. Osborne rolling in trouble. Directing traffic, looking for something, and it's sacked at the 48. The Cavalier defense comes up big. That they did, Patrick. They rushed three. They dropped eight into coverage. Osborne had nowhere to go with the football, and Coldwater will hold. Coldwater takes over at midfield with 153 remaining. Now Versailles still has a pair of timeouts remaining in the football game. And the ball on the 47. Said there's still a chance for Versailles, but it's going to use all their timeouts. There are two remaining, and they're going to have to keep Coldwater from getting a first down. If the Cavaliers get a first down, that will pretty much salt this one away. Blockberger handoff. Pot Cotter up the middle to the 46 yard line. About a seven yard pickup on first down. And Versailles. We'll take timeout. 143 left in the game. Cavaliers with a 21-14 lead here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Wright State University. Whether you are interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Second down and three for Coldwater. 143 left in the game. Hand off to Ebbing. Ebbing diving across the 45. That's where he's going to be marked down at the 45. For sales, will take their final timeout and stop the clock with 135 remaining and a massive third down play coming up for both sides. If Coldwater could get the first down here, that's pretty much yep. it. If Versailles gets a stop here, there's still a chance for the Tigers. If Versailles gets a stop, you know, you're looking then at uh, hold the football for as long as you can and then punt it with as little time left on the clock. Try to pin Versailles deep. But obviously, as you said, the first down right here locks this one up. Something looming as part of the game recap for this game is Versailles with two big turnovers in cold water territory tonight. They were moving in towards a score and they lost the ball those two times. Yep. Maybe those are touchdowns, maybe they're not, we don't know, but that is certainly something that is going to uh, be looked at looking back from this game, knowing that Versailles probably had a number of opportunities if they don't pull out the win here tonight and they, they, they just coughed at the ball at the wrong times. Let's see what happens here. Obviously, Coldwater wants to keep it on the ground. Let's go man on man. Here comes the Versailles rush. I doubt there's going to be a pass thrown here. Blockberger is back. There's the handoff to first Jeff Lake. Spin move. Wright State University first down, and that should do it. What a huge play off the left side of the formation. A really strong run that time by Cody Depwig. For sales and just just couldn't quite get the stop they needed right there at that particular time. A lot of that because of the big offensive line push from Coldwater. 
The rain looks like it has stopped. And the clock runs. And the clock will continue to move with 108 remaining. A couple of snaps here. To the victory formation they go. This is not Miami, so they'll just knee it down. Cold, Patrick. Cold. Just Honest, but cold. If you state facts, you don't get in trouble. That's what I've been told. So Coldwater will improve to 9-0, and and the stage well, is set. 9-0 and Coldwater, 9-0 and Marion Local. Marion Local won tonight 41-7 over St. Henry. They will both be 9-0, and both be 7-0 and in a conference, and we will have that for you next week on WOSN. Looking forward to the call of that contest out there at Booster Field. And the Cavaliers <laughs> with the flip get it done here at home on senior night as the Cavaliers take down Versailles 21 to 14. Real quick, I want to say Versailles, two losses on the season, uh, but man, what uh, a tough two games they played. They, they have been as competitive. They are right there knocking on the door, and, and yes, they're going to leave here tonight with a loss, but they will go very deep in the playoffs this year, and they have a great chance to, to win a whole lot of football games in the playoffs, but you know, congratulations to Coldwater. They, they, had, they were on the ropes a little bit. When it got to be 14 all, Momentum was against them. They were able to get it stopped and get that score late and then force the fumble. Congratulations to the Coldwater Cavaliers. They got it done when they needed to. There are very few conferences in the state of Ohio where you can finish third exactly. and be a legitimate state title threat, and that's exactly what Versailles is. You know, Patrick, we say it every year. It's easier to win a state championship than it is to win a MAC championship, and the numbers kind of prove those certain things out. But uh, we'll have a great football game for you next week, and we'll be heading into the playoffs the week after that. And these three teams are these two plus Mary Local, plus other teams out of the MAC as well. They're going to be very well represented in state playoffs. And we'll have a lot of it for you here on WOSN. That is going to wrap up our coverage tonight. I want to thank Jacob O'Neill and Zach Keith. Zach able to stay warm and dry, hopefully, as he was out there getting the footage for us. Our final here tonight, Coldwater 21 for sales 14 for Mark Shine and our entire WOSN staff. I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everybody, from Coldwater.